thanks for joining us. And we're going to go over um, how to basically what they are and how to set them up and um, how to use them, what they might be used for. So in a real simple way to explain, perhaps, a, a geofence or a zone is just a boundary or an invisible fence, or perhaps but you would want to call it a, a virtual perimeter that you set up, and it allows you to have a notification whenever you enter or exit from that zone, whenever one of your vehicles does. So we're in our portal here right now, So, um, and I'll show you from here. But uh, what you might want to do, um, different companies, depending on your business and what you do, you would set them up for different reasons. So if you had, um, say, your beacons in sales vehicles, and each of your uh, sales guys has its own territory, then you would want to maybe set up zones around their territories so you would know perhaps if they were leaving their territory or perhaps if they were entering someone else's territory. So you might want to be notified of that. Um, for someone who um, does delivery of supplies and such, you might want to set up a fence so that you get a notification as one of your trucks is coming back to the yard and say give yourself a half an hour's notice so that the um, guys have time to get that load ready to put on the vehicle once it drives in, as opposed to, you know, the driver coming into the yard, they know he's there, then they get the load ready, so it really can reduce your turnaround time because the guy drives in, he, they already knew he was coming, they put the load on the truck and off he goes. So something like that, or perhaps, um, you know, for any other reason um, that you might want to know for example, if you wanted to set it up around a um, certain bar or something that they, or casino perhaps, where you didn't want them um, to be parking or uh, around someone's home to be notified if you know one of your employees is going home during the day and spending time when they're supposed to be at the work site or perhaps around a work site because the vehicles aren't supposed to leave the work site. Different reasons like that. So. Those are just some examples. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a lot more, and, and you can think of some that would specifically apply to your own business and ones that might uh, help you out. So what I'll go through is uh, how we actually create them. So depending on the, uh, the beacons that you have, there are different types that we can actually set up. So if you go on your administration tab and click here, and if you don't have administrator um, permissions within your own portal, you would have to get someone who does to go in here and do these. Uh, but it's, click on the administration tab, and if you click on the beacons over on the left-hand side here, it will tell you, it's a quick way to know what type of beacons you have. So, I can see here quickly we have 6100, 6150, 6151, and 6450s. And then I'm just going to click back on our scenarios. So the other type of beacons we do have are 6200, which are the older type of beacons. 6200s can do a rectangular zone. And I won't cover those today, but um, if you have those and want to know how to set them up specifically, I can help with those. The um, 6100s and the 6450s. So the 6450s are your plug and play, and the 6100s are again older, not as old as the 6200s. Those um, those ones can do circles. We can set up circular zones, and the newer beacons and and the 6150s, 6150s, they can um, actually do both the circles and polygon. So um, if you need any more clarification, you're welcome to give me a call after the webinar and, and we can go through that. But basically what I'm going to show you how to do is set up both a circular zone and a polygon zone. So what we're going to do is create a new scenario. So we just would simply 
click on Add Scenario, and then you can give it whatever name you would like. So um, you can call it, you know, Employee Home. For example, I'll just set one up around my house just to see. And when you click on the event type, you're going to go down here. So we're going to set up a circular zone. And what we do is we just enter any starting address. So, and you can even start from the just the city. You don't have to put in the actual physical address, but it uh, just gives us somewhere to start. Click Get Map. And it gives you some instructions here. And basically what all we're going to do is wherever I click on the map is going to start the center of my zone. And as I move my mouse, it's just going to draw a circle. So I can make that as big or as little as I want. When I click again, it just fills it in and I know where it is. It's going to tell me down here the actual radius I've got. But if I think, oh, that's not right, I want to move it a bit, I just simply click anywhere else and start the circle there. Okay? And then from there, what we need to determine is whether it's an allowed or disallowed zone. The difference being, if I'm saying it's an allowed zone, I'm saying that then when the vehicle comes out of the zone, so is leaving that area that I've set up, that's when I'm going to get a notification. If I'm saying it's a disallowed zone, I'm going to get a notification when a vehicle enters that zone. So perhaps I wanted to know what time my employees are leaving their homes in the morning. I could set that up around the home make it an allowed zone because then it's going to notify me when they leave in the morning. Simply click on the aerial here. It says click to continue. I determine when do I want that set up. Do I want that set up for 24-7? Do I want it set up for off hours, work hours? Do I want to set up specific hours? Anything I want I can pretty much uh, make it work for. I can have it just Monday to Friday, just weekends. Then who's going to be notified? So I can simply click on them and put them over here. Who's going to be notified? By email or by text? Anybody over in this side is going to get that notification. Again, click to continue. And which vehicles does it apply to? Does that apply to my entire fleet? Just any group item group I've set up? Or is it just one specific vehicle? Again, you know, you can be really specific. So let's say we're going to include the whole fleet. And I click on Next. Gives me the information to confirm. And I create scenario. And it's that simple to do. If we wait. And then I have it here, Employee Zone. If I want to edit it, I simply click on it and go back in and change anything. And then to set up a Polygon Zone, same way, we're just going to call it <coughs> anything we want. And we're going to choose a Polygon Zone. It's going to tell us over here what type of beacons it applies to. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And then we'll just give it a starting address, put it around the office here, get a map, and this one's just going to be a little bit different because instead of, instead of just um, drawing a circle and clicking on the map and moving back, I'm going to actually draw it. So if I wanted to 
click here to start. And I just want to, you can see I can make it whatever shape I want. Now what it also does within the polygon zone, I can um, give it a name in here and then I can create another one as well. I don't have to go back out and create a new scenario. I can create a new one right here. So I can say um, perhaps I wanted uh, to know when the vehicles are leaving Port Moody. So I can just simply whatever shape and whatever it is and call it here. Port Moody. And then over on the side here, I define again whether it's allowed or disallowed. Am I going to get the notification when a vehicle enters it? Or am I going to get the notification when the vehicle exits the zone? So I would just go down from here, determine what schedule it is, determine who gets the notification and what type of notification they get, <clears throat> and which vehicle it applies to. Click Next, verify the information, and then create the scenario. And then I set some up yesterday and uh, I'll show you here. Here's an alert. Okay, and this is the kind of email you're going to get. The beacon has violated its zone and uh, which vehicle it is and the last location information, which direction it was heading and information. You're just going to get an email and the text would be very similar to that. So what I can do is also um, take any questions and if anyone's got any questions, this that's the basic information that we've got here for the webinar today. So you're um, welcome to stay if you've got questions or you can certainly give us a call here at the office afterwards and I can help with anything. Um, there's always information and training on our website. I'll also show you um, as well where you can sign up on the website for the next webinar that's coming up. So if you just go to neuroglobal.com and then click on the login, you can uh, right down here, I don't know, I'm probably going to have to refresh this because I was on here earlier. There we go. Register for our next webinar, which will be June 26th, and it's going to be on best practices. Um, several important things that we want to make sure you know and want to make sure that you're doing. And um, Shannon Katz, who is our um, VP of Business Development, is going to um, lead that webinar. So thanks for joining and like I said, I'll just handle any questions if anyone has those right now. And uh, I've got a question here that is uh, asking how many zones can that you have. So if you've got circular zones, you can set up five per vehicle. And if you have polygon zones, you're able to set up ten per vehicle. And so if you have the beacons that allow you both circular and polygon zones, then you would be able to have both the five circular zones and the ten polygon zones. Let me just check if there's any other questions. So it doesn't look like there's any other questions right now, so thanks so much for joining us. And uh, like I said, feel free to give us a call anytime you want some help with it. And if you want any other information, thanks so much for joining us today.